What's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna use GraphQL and Prisma to add some CRUD operations to our application. So the whole idea is that users can log in and then once they're logged in, they have access to this feed or this kind of like a blog. And then they can either post to it or they can just consume other people's posts. So we're just gonna jump right into it and I'm gonna show you how you can use Prisma and GraphQL to do that. So first of all, we need to actually edit our schema for our database. So, and we're using Prisma to handle that. In these posts, I want there to be content. So some text that the user decided to, to put in the post. I also want the, the author's username in the post and just spice it up. I'll put the authors of uh, the day that the author joined our website or our application. So the day that they became a member, basically. So to do that, I'll put member sense, and this will be a date time and give it a default value of now. So this will give it a, a default value when, when a user creates their account automatically. And so now I want our users to have posts to their account, ideally like this, and this is how we do that in Prisma. So we're gonna actually have to create an object or a model for that. So model post. Like so, and then every post will have some content like I uh, mentioned before. And of course we cannot forget the ID, the primary key. And looks like it auto completed for me. That's pretty cool. And so now we, here we have a user and we'll be calling this author. And wow, I just pressed save and it just did this all for me. That's pretty cool. I was about to type this all out type of user and we're going to hold it in we're going to hold the relation using the user id field i'll change this to author username because our application has a uh, unique usernames so we can do this so this will be author username and it references on the user table it references username and this will be a type of string all right that's pretty cool and just to be consistent I'll rename this table to posts like that. All right, and that's pretty much it. So let's apply this migration to our database. I accidentally pressed enter. So it reset my database and it gave it an automatic name, but it doesn't really matter. It's still saved. That's all that matters. So now that we're done here, we can actually start um, start working on our resolvers in our GraphQL schema. So to do that, we need to go and first make the types. So I'm going to make a file here called post.ts. Okay, so here we can export a, a const and it's going to be, we'll call it create post and it'll be a mutation. So we're going to extend the type of mutation and we have to import that and our definition, which is just a function. And here we can define a field that our mutation will have. So we're gonna be calling it create post. And here we can uh, put in some options here. So the type that it returns will be a new post. So I'm gonna create a post type. So an object, object type, the name will be post, the definition, T dot and then there's content. Oh, not dot content is dot string content. T dot. I'm pretty sure we're going to include an author in here. And then we're going to need the type for the author. So I'll just create another object here. and call it author, the definition. Every author will have a string, which is member sense. And not only a string, but, oh yeah, a username. So username like that. So then here, every post has an author and has some content. So then when we create a post, we're returning the same post we created, we're returning it to the front end so we can display it on the UI. And we're also gonna need some arguments. Well, just one, 
and it will be the content of the post. So this will be a non-null argument and also a string argument like that. And then here we can define the resolver and I'm going to create that in a separate file. So I'm going to copy this type so I can go over here and create a post resolvers.ts and export const create post resolver so make sure I import that and so now here I can say the resolver is the create post resolver so we're going to allow users to create a post but also to read all the posts so they can so the front end can display it on the on the page so get posts this is a query here we'll call this get post no arguments and it's going to be a list of posts and here we'll define a new resolver just got to grab this type here and there we go and change this to get post resolver so now the the resolver is get the is called get post resolver so now we're done with our graphql schema now we can just purely work on our resolvers but before we do that, since right now we're not we're not getting any type safety, it's because we're not actually exporting this or importing it into our schema. We're only exporting it from this file. So we need to go over here and export it from this index, which is connected to our schema. So let's do that real quick. So there we go. And since now, since I have this tab open over here, it's generating the types automatically now. So now to create a post, we need, and let me restart the TypeScript server. Okay, so we need the content, we need the request object and a Prisma client. So the first thing we need to do is actually, we need to make sure that this user is logged in. So to do that, we're gonna grab their, uh, their cookies. So to do that, we're gonna import this library that we've been using so const nookies from nookies and then we can just do cookies equals like that oh no it's actually nookies.get okay so now we can do if there's no cookies.sid we throw new error not logged in And so now that we know that our user's request has a cookie called SID, we know that that could potentially be a, a token that we've created. So we just need to verify that token like that. And we get back a decoded, decoded JDBT. And so now this needs to be asynchronous. Now we need to do the same logic over here for the get post query. So I'm actually gonna um, make this its own function. So over here in the utils, I'll create an auth.ts and I'll just uh, make a function called is auth. And all it needs is the request object, which I'll grab the type of here. And then gotta import all these types. And then basically we just do what we just did here. Okay. And um, this needs to be asynchronous. And so also we can do if there's no username in our uh, token, then we also throw an error say not logged in because our tokens do have usernames. That's how we've uh, done it in the past uh, previous episodes. So now we can just return that and it should have a username where the user is logged in. So we can do const decoded JUT is equal to await is auth 
and pass in that request. And so now that we know that they're logged in, we can just go ahead and create a post uh, right away. So we can do const new post is equal to await prisma dot post dot create and some data. The content, well, we just pass it in like that. And the author's username will be the token dot username. We also want to select because we're going to be returning the content, the username and the time that this, this author has been a member of our website. So we want to select from the author uh, relationship of this post. And we want to select in that object, we want to get member since. So we put true here. So now we can just return an object and pass in the author, author field member sense is oops new post dot author dot member sense the username is i mean the username that we just created the post with and then we'll pass in the same content and that's pretty much it why is this screaming at me oh yeah we have to do to date string because this is actually a date object so we need to put it as a string so now this is a resolver for users to create posts and we're going to do an even easier for users to get the posts. So this, we just need access to Prisma and the request. And this needs to be asynchronous. So now we can do const post is equal to await Prisma dot post dot find many. And you could do pagination passing in a cursor, but we're not going to do that. So here we just want to select the author and from the author, we want to select the username and this has to be set to true and member sense. And then from that same post, we want to get the content of the post. And this will return us an array of posts. And we want to uh, order this array in descending order. Oh, not just descending. I have to put ID descending. So I have to choose the field that will be descending. Okay, so this is pretty much it. And if we see here, what we're returning is an array. And the array has objects with author. And each author has member sense username. And then each object, not only does it have an author, but it has some content. So that's exactly what we've selected here. We have objects, an array of objects with an author and content. So what we can do is just return those posts. And it turns out we never ended up using this variable here. So we can just do it like that. And ooh, since this is a date type, and not a string, we're gonna have to do something here. So we're gonna have to map over each post and I'll change this to uh, parentheses for a, a return, uh, immediate return. So here we're just gonna return and, and we're gonna spread over the post. And we wanna change the author, but we also don't wanna change anything else. So spread over post.author and the member sense will be post dot author dot member sense dot to date string. So now that we have our resolvers on the back end, let's just quickly write um, the queries and mutations for so we can start using them on the front end. So I'm going to create a file here called post dot GraphQL. So here we'll just uh, we'll name this query get posts. And we're, we have to name these things because we're going to be running some GraphQL type generation. So on each post, well, we actually have to run get post. And I did name it get post, right? Yeah, I named it get posts. And then we selecting an author and the, the username of each author and the member sense and then the content of each. Then here we can write our mutation 
and it will be called create post. It accepts some arguments as a variable. So this is the content of the new post that's being created. So here we're just going to do the create post mutation, passing in this variable as the content. And I actually want to make this a required field. And so here we're going to be returning an author as well as some content. And the author is the same thing up here. We're just basically we're just returning a, a post. And so now what we can do is we can go over here and do yarn run generate. So it's going to generate our hooks that we can start using on the front end. Let me try spreading the post into a duplicate array. Whatever, I think this will work. Okay, so it did work. So now we can start working on the front end. So the first thing I want to do is actually, I'm going to show you how it is to log in, but how we've been doing in the past episodes is that our tokens and cookies expire in like one minute. So that's pretty inconvenient. So I'm going to go here and change that to be seven days. And then max age is 60. So this is one minute, 60 seconds. So one minute times 60 for one hour and then times 24 for a day times seven for seven days. Okay, so now over here, um, let's actually real quick, just create an account. So let's sign up bob at gmail.com bobby the password is just bobby123 so we're going to create that account and verify that email and log in here so bob at gmail.com bobby and bobby123 okay and there we go okay so welcome bobby so now let's head over to the front end, which is over here in our pages at index. Okay, so instead of just rendering this heading here, I'm actually going to create a component called home.tsx. And this is where I'll render. And I'm just going to import that. And so I need access to the username, so I'll be grabbing it here. And I gotta put the right type here. And then I'll put enter base props username string. There we go. And so here I just render home. and just pass in the username and yeah i'm exporting this so i'm not sure why it's not importing for me but that's not a problem there we go logged in is missing but required in props oh i named it home as well Okay, let me just rename this to index down here because there we go. So now everything should work and we could just work in this home component right here. And we're still logged in. So right now what I want to do is create a form that will let our users actually make a post. So to do that, I'm actually going to render a VStack here. like so and the spacing will be two because I'm going to put right under it a formic component we'll give it some initial values of new post empty and then a validation schema equal to and then we have to import yup So here do yup.object and we're just going to have a new post that 
dot required dot min so at least one uh one character in this post and maximum 49 so we don't want super long posts this is kind of like twitter and so on submit we get access to the values and some actions that we can run so for now what we'll just do is console log those values and just reset our form and we'll get back to this later so now inside of this format component we're gonna make a form so i basically want an input and a button and i want them side by side so i'm going to use an h stack for that and here i could just render an input the placeholder will be new post the name will be new post and instead of an input let me do a field as an input so all the other props get passed in automatically by formic it's pretty cool and so ne right next to it i'm gonna have a button and let's keep it the color scheme purple just like the login page and what this button will say is submit just submit then the type of this will be submit that's pretty much it but if we do this we'll see that nothing happens here in our console nothing prints out because it's not submitting because this needs to be a formic form so now it resets our form and you see here it's uh, being uh, logged to the console and right now we're not getting any error messages show up on the front end and to do that it's very simple uh, down here under the h stack so that means i need to put a fragment here we're gonna re uh, render an error message and this is a formic component that takes a render prop and it's a function and it has the message inside of it so here we'll just render some text from chalky ui and the color of this text we'll put it red 500 and this font size put it as small and we need the name to be new post and I think that's pretty much it. I'm getting some errors here. Okay, I just refreshed the page and there's no errors. But we're still not getting... Oh, there it is. There's the uh, error message. And I'm actually going to make this input auto-complete off. So there we go. And if we try to spam this thing... There we go. Okay, so now we have our form. And since we have these hooks that were generated automatically, we can just use them. So whenever we submit, we actually want to run this uh, create post mutation. So right here, what I'm going to do is do, well, I need to use the hook. So const is equal to use create post mutation. And then here I'll grab the uh, mutation there and just run it and pass in the variables that we're expecting here. So the content is values dot new post. Here we go. So this will create a post on the back end. Not only do we want to be able to create posts, we want to be able to see them. So I'm going to go here and use the get post query. And this will automatically fetch all the posts of our website and put it here and put it in data. So then we can go down under our form. So we can do data dot get posts dot map. And we're basically just mapping through every post. So here what we want to render is a grid. So I'm just going to render 
a grid and then here for every post it will be a grid item from chalker ui post dot content inside some text like that and we actually need to define this so this will have template columns of repeat um, put three fr or three one fr so be three columns evenly spaced out and we'll put a little gap in between um, every post here gap of four so here our post content and it could just be some text here or some heading and then here on the bottom some on some text we'll be putting the post dot author dot username and then this will be in an eight stack because right next to it I want to put the uh, basically like this person has been with us since the date that they created their account so kind of like this post dot author dot member sense I'm getting some nasty errors here oh I'm missing a key okay so this can just be post and key and just do it like that so this heading don't want it to be too big so I'll give it a size of medium and this text over here I want it to be a font size of extra small there we go and this is giving me some type problems here okay because I gotta put a question mark in front of everything so also we just want to give this some padding and we want to space out the uh, the name of the author and the time since they've created their account. So I'll put space between here. And MX Auto to center it. And I think that's everything. Uh, I want to align the content. Well, that doesn't really matter. I think we're good to go. So we have this grid item and that's pretty much all we need. Oh, we might want to give it a background actually. So we can actually see it as a box. And some padding as well. I'll give it a border radius of like two or something. Okay, that's enough uh, styling for now. I think we're done. We could test it out. So I'm just gonna make this bigger and create a post and that's a problem okay so it says something's undefined here mm, this is not good that seems to be with our resolver so i'm gonna go back to those to that resolver here and dot create so what's going on here? A few moments later. Okay, so I just restarted this application. How much you want to bet that was the issue going on? It looks like it was. So I'm just going to create a post here. Okay, so there's no error. That should mean that there's a post. Okay, so let me make another post. And so when we refresh our page, the get post query is going to run and we should see a grid of posts so let's refresh this page and there we go we see these posts right here and i can do another post to submit and we refresh there it is this is pretty cool so in the next video what we're going to do and to wrap this series up is um, we're going to make it so that when you post, you don't have to refresh your page to see the newest post. We're going to have a subscription set up. And basically, we're going to be able to see whenever someone makes a post and it's going to show up on our UI automatically. And we're going to use graphical sub subscriptions to do that. 
So yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.